Dear student, myself architect Zainab Samreen from APJ School of Architecture and Planning, Greater Noida. I welcome you all to the e-lecture series as recommended by AKTU. Today we will gain an understanding on different types of hardware used in doors or windows as an essential elements. They actually play a pivotal role in modern day home decor and furnishing also. This topic is taken from module 1 part 2. So in this presentation we will be covering about the introduction of the hardwares, the classification of hardwares, what are the factors that you need to keep in mind before selection of any hardware, what are the needs of hardware as per their functionality, their definitions, the function and the materials by which they are made. And in the last, I will be giving you some brands that makes hardware and some useful IS codes and handbooks from which uh, I have taken some data and that will be useful for you. So, Beginning with the topic, first I would like to show you some hardware. You may call it fixtures or fittings. And you must have seen in your homes, your college and in your vicinity. I feel all the elements that you are currently looking at is familiar to you. And yes, you might be knowing the technical names of some of them. Before going deep into its type and all, I would like to introduce you about hardware. So they are nothing but the metal parts and fittings which are used in doors and windows to make them stronger, more functional, durable and it also eases in fabrication. We can also say that they are used for three basic purposes. Number one, protection. Number two, decoration and number three convenience for instance imagine a door without any lock will it be feasible no imagine a door without a handle will you be able to pull and open no now when it comes to design or specifically interior design we architects are very choosy, so these hardwares need to be wonderful and should stand out also. This way you can use it under the theme of decoration as Whenever we will be talking about hardware, it will include fittings and fixtures both. Fixtures are basically objects which are firmly fixed on doors or windows for proper functioning. For example, handles, knobs, etc. Whereas fittings are basically small parts like screws, etc. which are used to fix the fixture. Now there are certain factors that you need to keep in mind during the selection of any hardware for doors or windows. Number one factor that you need to keep in mind is that they come in various materials. I have taken the three basic materials, iron, brass or aluminum. So you have to choose as per your requirement. But you need to know the difference between them. Right? So the hardwares made of iron are usually black enameled or copper oxidized. While on the other hand, the brass fittings are oxidized or finished bright or chromium plated so it will look little golden in color giving it a rich feeling the most commonly used are aluminium fittings which are normally anodized number two factor that you need to keep in mind is that they come in various shapes and sizes various designs so you have to choose what suits best with your designs with your requirements the third thing to keep in mind is that it should be reasonably smooth and free from sharp edges and corners so that it may not injure while using. 
one more thing to keep in mind is that the screw holes in the item should be countersunk type now it may be a new term to you so i have uh, placed an image on the lowermost corner on on the screen they are basically screws um, or fasteners that usually sits flush with the surface of the material so that you can cover them easily now if we tabulate the hardware on the basis of their need we can categorize them into 5 to 7 major heads suppose we are having a door frame and a shutter now to fix them together we need a hinge to fix the frame to the wall we need a hole fast and so on so we basically need some hardware to hang the door for which we can use a hole fast hinges pivots etc after hanging the door we will be operating the door or you can say we will be using the door for this we will require handles knobs push or pull bars stoppers etc apart from manual closing of door we may need closures so that the door may close on its own we may need catchers catchers are usually used in shelf doors or almira or silencers now when it comes to privacy and security we need some hardware to lock the door like latches l drops star boards barrel bolts chain guards etc most of them are being used by us at our homes now the door is all set ready but sometimes it may suffer damage due to heavy pedestrian volume means more people are using it or it is being used very frequently then in those cases you protect the edge of the door using an edge protector and the foot of the door using kick plates you must have seen metal plates in bathrooms uh, at your home and in in fire safety doors also so there are certain other hardwares also that we use like door viewers in which we peep from inside to see who is standing outside uh, we may use knockers as well now first of all we need to fix the door frame in the wall only then the door can be hanged now to fix the frame we need an item or a hardware known as hold fast which you can see in the picture in this picture it is basically a wrought iron or mild steel leaf of around 5 mm thick thickness which is manufactured in a way that both its ends are bended one in the upward direction and one in the downward direction the leaf which are bending in the downward direction it may also be divided into two parts you can see here now this side which is having screw holes is fixed to the frame and rest of the portion is cemented in the roughly broken niches in the wall now if we are placing three hole fast on both sides of the frame one question may be floated in your mind where to put it how high or how low so the upper hole fast should be this one this one it should be 1 ft or 300 mm below the top of door frame and one hole fast ha has to be placed in the middle of the door or a little higher and the third hole fast should be placed 1 ft or 300 mm
Now, since the frame has been fixed in the wall, we need to fix the shutter with the frame and that should be movable also. In the animation, you can see here there is a, there is a shutter which is moving but the movement is just because of a hardware which is fixed to the frame and to the shutter. This hardware is called as hinge. It basically helps the door to rotate freely along its axis. It is having two flanges or plates of around 1.5 mm thickness joined together by a common pin. Keep in mind that no door can function without a hinge. They are commonly made of SS stainless steel, cast iron and also available in brass and aluminium. Now to fix this on the frame and on the door, first we mark the places of all the three or four hinges position that we are going to place. Then we cut the niche of about 2 mm thick on both of them so that it sits flush with the surface. Lastly, we screw one plate of the hinge to the door and one to the frame. This we have learnt for a very common hinge butt hinge. There are many types of hinges available in the market. Now if we see the most common type of hinge which is butt hinge. You can see in the image uh, we can use it for internal doors or cabinet doors. In this picture you can clearly see two plates joined by a common pin and there are countersunk holes for fixing with the screw. Right? So there are basically three things. Countersunk holes the two plates or leaves and one pin and its cover. They usually come in various sizes ranging from half inch to eight inches with thickness of around 1.5 mm. Now one question may be popped up in your mind that how many hinges do I need for my door? If you are having a door of about 2100 mm how many hinges you need to place two three four five or what so as a general rule i am telling you that one hinge is needed per every 30 inches of door or fraction for example if your door is 60 inches tall so you need two hinges because you have to place hinge after every 30 inches so 60 divided 60 inches divided by 30 inches means 2 if your door is around 60 inches to 90 inches tall then you will be needing 3 hinges if your door is around 90 inches to 120 inches tall then you will be needing 4 hinges as I said, there are various kinds of hinges that we use as per requirement. So the other hinge is rising butt hinge. The left image on your screen, as the name suggests, rising means it is lifting upward and is very similar to butt hinge. When you see the structure of this hinge, it is having similar two plates as in case of butt hinge with a helical nickel joint in between, which helps the door to raise vertically upwards around 10 mm when you open the door. It is used for the rooms which are having carpets. It is a little high in cost. A 3 inch size hinge is available in Rs. 275. Now look at the second image of this slide. This type of hinge is called as spin hinge. Very similar to butt hinge but here the two plates can be fixed separately to the frame and the shutter. You can see here also.
flush hinge as the name says flush means these type of hinges do not require a corner to be cut in the door as one leaf this one the smaller one one leaf fits inside the other that is why they do not leave any space or gap in between frame and the door which gives a very clean and consistent look it comes in sizes of around 3 inches 4 inches and 5 inches and are used for lightweight cabinets cupboards and doors the hinge on the right is a pivot hinge they are accurately named because they pivot on a single point see here rather than around a pin like we were seeing in most of the hinges there were there was a common pin this type of hinge is installed in the floor as well as the top of the door frame which creates a seamless view these hinges are used on extra heavy or high traffic doors because they can carry a lot more weight than butt hinges as the door is supported by the bottom arm and the floor rather than the door from as we have now the hinge on the left is called as parliamentary hinge these kind of hinges permit the door shutters to rest parallel to the wall therefore it is used as places where the opening is narrow and we have to keep the opening free from obstruction now the other hinge is called as piano hinge it it is also called as continuous hinge but as the name suggest continuous it means it fits along the entire length of door it is available up to 72 inches means 6 feet and it provides protection against warping and are generally used for shutters of cupboards wardrobes etc butterfly hinge it is also known as surface mount hinge by definition a butterfly hinge is a variation of a strap hinge in which the leaf plates are decoratively shaped in a manner that resembles the wings of a butterfly see here it's looking like a butterfly now when so much effort has been put on decoration we might want to put it at places where the hinge will be visible so we can use it on ornamental boxes cabinets general furniture yes the image on the left must be familiar to you since you must have gone through ledged and braised door as the name suggests t hinge or garnet hinge the hinge looks like alphabet t it has a long arm which is screwed to the shutter you can see here long arm which is screwed to the shutter and a short arm this is the short arm which is screwed to the door frame this kind of hinge is used for heavy doors such as garages stables gates etc and it is also used for latched and battened doors now the hinge on the right is narmadi hinge it is very similar to two t hinge but here the plate is fixed to the shutter this plate is fixed to the shutter and 
this is the pin it is fixed to the frame which rotates this kind of uh, hinge is also used for heavy doors now the hinge on the left is a strap hinge this one this is a strap hinge it has two long straps one is this and the other is this it is basically a substitute of t hinge and with same usage it is also used for heavy doors and at places like garages stables gates etc this hinge is called as spring hinge as the name suggest suggests spring means to rotate or to swing along on axis therefore this kind of hinge is used for swinging doors which closes automatically due to spring action coming to the end of installing hardware needed for door the left image this is a self close hinge it has basically a spring built into it you can see here also this so when you start to close the cabinet the spring at some point takes over and pulls the cabinet door closed with a tap this hinge is a soft close hinge soft means it's not making sound since soft materials do not make sounds so this hinge has hydraulics built into them so when you close the cabinet door the hydraulics take over and ease the door close silently most of the hinges that are soft closing most of the hinges that are soft closing are self closing also but all self closing hinges are not soft closing it may produce a thump sound now with this we finished learning the hardware required for hanging the door moving ahead we will be studying about hardware required for operating the door. now for operating the door either opening or closing the first thing we need are handles and they are the best door closing devices till date it may or may not accommodate a locking system uh, the handle is basically placed at a height of around 900 to 1000 mm from the floor level and it is placed at a distance of around 100 mm from the edge of the door so that it can be conveniently used the size of the handle varies from 3 inches to 12 inches uh, like this you can see a handle here Um, this is a detail of a handle placed on the glass doors so there are pull handles on both sides of the door in between there is a glass now you can see various types of handles uh, for smooth opening or closing of doors like uh, this is a wardrobe handle just 
for opening and closing of the uh, closing the door of the uh, wardrobe mm, this is a bow type handle which is a very common type of handle and it comes uh, in sizes uh, various sizes uh, this is a door pull handle which may have a lock system now there is one very interesting thing which is bar so you must have seen these kind of bars in malls and other public buildings it is also called as panic bar push bar crash bar or a panic exit devices uh, these bars are basically used in a door opening in public buildings it is a type of door opening mechanism which allows users to open a door by pushing a bar by pushing this bar since during a fire escape people are usually in panic situation therefore fire doors always open outwards and this door open just as a little pressure is put on these touch bars uh, knobs are basically a type of handles but uh, they stand apart in their shapes and uses first of all we will discuss how to install a knob whenever you have to install a knob you have to measure the diameter of the knob and you just create a bore hole here in your door and an edge bore on the edge of the door because in knob there is a closing system and then you fix your knob and screwed it there are various kinds of knobs um, if we talk about the passage knobs as the name suggests then it means it is a lock set which has no locking function at all and it can be used anywhere um, where a locking function is not needed such as closets or entrance to rooms where privacy is not an issue then dummy locks dummy knobs are fully dummy in nature they have no mechanical latch mechanism uh, if we discuss about the keyed entrance locks keyed means there is a provision of lock and key so in these kinds of door knobs uh, they are generally used on exterior doors or any door where keyed access is required on the interior they will have either a push button or a turn button that locks or unlocks the door then we have a privacy knob and now stopper is also an important hardware and you must have seen door stoppers sometimes on the wall sometimes on the floor so here you can see a door stopper has been placed on the wall this is called as an anchor fitting which is put on the wall which is placed on the wall and this is called as a door fitting which is placed on the door 
this is a kind of kick down door stopper in which you kick the stopper with your foot this is a kind of wedge rubber door stopper this is a kind of floor mounted rubber door stopper Uh, so we have covered all the hardwares required for hanging the door and for operating the doors. Uh, there are certain brands, uh, certain reputed brands of hardwares that I have listed down here. You may go through it. And I have listed some useful IS codes and handbooks from which I have taken certain data and uh, which uh, which are standard so it will be very useful in the next lecture we will be studying about door hardware meant for closing locking and protecting the door uh, we'll also discuss about some miscellaneous hardware as well thank you for listening to me have a good day